I'm Dr. Keon West of the Institute of Psychological Sciences at the University of Leeds. Today I'm going to talk to you about a single paper that encompasses two studies. It's by Rosenhan in 1973. It's called On Being Sane in Insane Places and was published in the journal Science. To understand the importance of this study, you have to ask yourself a question. Can you tell the crazy from the sane? Are you able to distinguish between the behaviors of those who are mentally insane and those who are still mentally sound? This question is not a silly question, and it's not in itself an insane one. However much we may be convinced that we can tell crazy people from sane people, the evidence actually doesn't bear that out. And if you follow me through the story of this study, I'll explain to you how. An equally important, if not more important, question is, can psychiatric professionals tell the difference between the crazy and the sane. Again, incredibly important, but this study bears out that actually telling the difference between crazy people and sane people is not that simple. It argues for abandoning in many important ways the labels that we give to the crazy and the sane. And it shows that in many ways the difference between somebody acting crazy and someone acting sane can be attributed to environment as much as any variables about the person. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's explain how Rosenhan tested that idea. To test whether or not psychiatric professionals could tell the difference between the crazy and the sane, Rosenhan himself and 11 other people, so that's 12 people in total, presented themselves as pseudo-patients to various psychiatric facilities. The 12 pseudo-patients had very specific instructions. They were supposed to go and present themselves to the psychiatric facility and to complain of hearing voices in their heads. These voices were supposed to be of the same sex and generally dis indistinct, difficult to make out. But they were told to specifically say that the voices said three things. They said hollow, said empty, and they said thud. That's it. Everything else was supposed to be 100% accurate. Not their names, of course. They didn't want to give their real names, lest these diagnoses embarrass them later in life. But apart from their names, and in some cases their vocations, because they didn't want to say they were psychiatrists or psychologists, as that might tip people off, everything else was true. They gave real histories about their relationships with their mothers and fathers. They gave real stories about the friends that they had. They gave real stories about their experiences, their emotional highs and lows. And all this was taken into account with their diagnosis. 